Hopefully, Corey LaJoy stacks some pennies because he will not return to Spire Motorsports in 2025. Who could replace him? Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Corey LaJoy will not return to Spire Motorsports in 2025. He confirmed that to The Athletic on Thursday. Jordan Bianchi said he wasn't taking any vacation time this summer break, and now we know why, because there's plenty of news to be had out there, and this will likely be the biggest story that comes out of NASCAR's summer break currently. It's a bit of like a 5 p.m. Friday news dump, right? Do this while everybody's on vacation. Not Jordan Bianchi. He's there hitting the pavement, trying to figure out what exactly is going on here, but Corey LaJoy won't be back at Spire Motorsports next season hopefully he stacks some pennies go ahead and make your stacking penny stacking burger jokes because he won't be back likely in the cup series next season remains to be seen where he's going in his statement he said he's excited to see what direction god puts what the plan is that god puts in front of he and his family next i'm sure some people might be surprised by this others aren't going to be surprised by this at all Corey the joy hasn't exactly had a banner year in the nascar cup series this season he sits 28th currently in driver points not very good four spots behind his rookie teammate Carson Hosevar. He has only one singular top 10 finish this year in 2024. That came back at the Daytona 500, the first race of the season, and he hasn't had one since then. He still does not have a single top 10 finish on a non-drafting track in his NASCAR Cup Series career. Meanwhile, both of his rookie teammates have done that this season. Carson Hosevar has done it multiple times. So for Corey, this was very much a put up or shut up type of year. And unfortunately, he's kind of just been shut up. He said back on in January on Sirius XM NASCAR radio that they'll be disappointed this year if they don't make the playoffs. He thinks that they're going to go out there and surprise some people. That just has not happened. And of course, he could still make the playoffs. He's going to have to win to get in. And maybe he does that at Daytona. Maybe not. And the one time he did have a chance at winning, he absolutely made sure that wasn't going to happen. So for Corey, I think that Corey LaJoy is a good media personality for the sport. But in terms of his production level at the Cup Series, just hasn't really paid off for him. Now, He is supposed to, or was supposed to, get Rodney Childers as his crew chief next year in 2025 in that number seven car. And that's where things got a little bit interesting, uh, right, with the Corey LaJoy situation. Back when Spire Motorsports announced Rodney Childers a few weeks ago following the Chicago street race, uh, they had talked about, in in the release that they put out on Twitter, they said that Rodney Childers will crew chief the number seven car in 2025. No mention of Corey LaJoy. Kind of interesting. In the press release, it mentioned Corey LaJoy, but not in the tweet. And everybody at the time was like, that's a little oddly worded. So now we know Corey LaJoy will not be back in that seven car next season. Now the biggest question is, who's going to replace him? Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Fire wants to contend, right? They're spending a lot of money. They basically have endless funds. They've got like the Oregon NIL fund out here. They're willing to go out and spend the money to get people that they want. Rodney Childers, they had to go out and pay him. They're going out and buying spotters away from other teams and paying them, I guess, what they believe the market value is. Same thing with engineers and other people uh, in the race team. And they're going out and buying another charter. And they just seemingly have... Have all of these funds. So who are they going to get to replace uh, Corey LaJoy in that number seven car with Rodney Childers as the crew chief? The driver that is going to be at the top of everybody's list is going to be Kyle Busch. He is seemingly unhappy at Richard Childers Racing, and it looks like he might be wanting to get out of there. It doesn't look like he's having a very fun time over at RCR. The problem is RCR picked up his option on his contract for 2025, which means that he should be tied to the team, right? Well, Gamebridge, sorry, Spire could go buy out his contract and bring him over to that number seven car if they wanted to. It's not something uh, that we haven't seen before. I mean, heck, RCR worked out a buyout deal with 2311 Racing to let Tyler Reddick out of his contract a year early as well. Maybe they do this with Kyle Busch. Maybe they put their feet down and in the sand and they're like, it's not happening again. Remains to be seen. But Kyle Busch Going over to the number seven car at Spire and pairing up with Rodney Childers is certainly an interesting combination and one that I think would garner pretty good results. Remember when Kyle said that payback was coming on the Pat McAfee show last Friday after getting dumped by uh, LaJoy the week prior at Pocono? Maybe he didn't mean payback on the track. Maybe he means that he's just going to straight up take this dude's job. Who knows at this point? But Kyle going over to Spire... It does make a little bit of sense as if they can buy him out. He did sell his KBM truck team to Spire at the end of last season for the 2024 season, so he seemingly has a pretty good relationship with them considering he drove for them in the truck series this year as well. I think the biggest sticking point here is going to be the fact that Spire is not a tier one Chevy team. They don't get the same amount of resources that a Hendrick, Trackhouse, or RCR gets, and is that something that Kyle is willing to to 
you know, make the move to knowing that Spire is willing to spend the money. They're just not getting the same amount of resources from the manufacturer as some of the other teams are. Another name that is certainly going to be on some people's list is Eric Jones, the three-time NASCAR Cup Series race winner, two-time Southern 500 winner. It currently does not have a contract for the 2025 season. It's expected that he's going to remain at Legacy Motor Club, but maybe he just wants to get out of there. And maybe the idea of working with Rodney Childers and working at a team that's spending a lot of money right now is is an enticing one for him and maybe he makes the jump and that leaves open uh, the 43 car over at LMC. Who knows? But Eric Jones does not have a contract right now. Another option that is certainly on the table is Zane Smith. He's already part of the Spire Motorsports lineup this season on loan from Trackhouse. We know that Spire has already announced that Michael McDowell is going to take over that number 71 car in 2025. But now that the seven car is open, what if Spire just put McDowell in that seven car with Rodney Childers and then the 71 just remains as Zane Smith? That would certainly solve a lot of track houses, headaches and problems trying to figure out what to do with their driver lineup. And that would allow them to hold on to Zane Smith, who has certainly found some more speed here over the last, I would say, month or so in the NASCAR Cup Series. So that is an entirely plausible option and certainly one that wouldn't require that much heavy lifting as some of the other options out there uh, would. Remains to be seen if that's something that Spire and track house would want to do. Now, another driver that is under contract at Spire is Raja Karuth. And everybody kind of views Raja as one of those prospects that will eventually make his way to the Cup Series. And I definitely think that he is talented enough to do that. I still think that he's probably two, maybe three seasons away from actually being Cup ready at this point. He has one NASCAR uh, Craftsman Truck Series win. He's had a pretty decent season so far, but I think you'd like to see more consistency out of him like we've seen from Corey Heim or Christian Eckes this season until he's able to make that move up. But he is under contract. Contract. Same with like Nick Sanchez. He has a GameBridge sponsorship. He has a good relationship with the team. Uh, would he be a guy that would move up? Again, I don't think that he's anywhere near ready at the moment, but just throwing names out there at this point. Another guy that could maybe possibly be in play, play that Skylar Gray song, I'm Coming Home. What about Justin Haley, the team's only NASCAR Cup Series winner in the Spire Motorsports history? What if he makes the move back over to Spire to drive that number seven car with Rodney Childers? It would be an interesting one considering considering he let the team to go to Colleg and then Colleg to go to Rick Ware Racing. And then would he bail on Rick Ware after only one season? They have had speed at times this year. It looks like they're really building that program up. Is he willing to bail out on that after having a pretty close relationship with Brad Keselowski and that whole RFK group who has an alliance with uh, Rick Ware Racing? I don't necessarily know if he would be willing to make that jump, but it's an enticing one if they wanted to do that because Justin Haley has certainly shown this year that his driving abilities, he can, you know, outdrive the equipment in a sense and get a better finish than probably where that equipment should be running at. So I'm interested to hear where everybody thinks uh, or who everybody thinks is going to land in that number seven car. Let me know in the comments, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.